Wings Prelude. one of the pastors here at Shepherd of the Hills. It is so wonderful to see you all here this morning. We are so glad to greet you on this beautiful Lord's Day. Today is a very special day for us here at Shepherd of the Hills. This is Cantata Weekend, and as you can see from behind me, our wonderful choir is here dressed in their robes and in their finest and stop making hand signals. <laughs> They are here to, to share with you a beautiful cantata that, that they will be singing today called Child of Peace. So we are very excited about that. If you're with us for the first time today, we are grateful for your presence. And please know that this is a place of open hearts and open minds and open doors. And wherever you have been on your journey, you are indeed welcome in this place. And it is our joy to greet you. Here at Shepherd of the Hills, it is our practice to fill out a prayer and presence card. You should have received that as you came in to worship today. Fill that out, drop that in the offering plate at the time of offering. It's a way for us to connect with you. It's a way for us to connect with all of those who worship with us on a regular basis. So please do fill that out and drop that in the offering plate at the time of offering. Besides this being a special cantata weekend, we are also very privileged today to have 13 folks who have decided to make Shepherd of the Hills their church home. 
So we may run just a tad longer in the service because we are bringing 13 new folks into our church family and we are doing a baptism today. And that is so very special. So please just keep that in mind. If we tend to run just a little bit, a hair over our scheduled time, just know that that's why. Right now we're gonna stand and we're gonna sing and join together in some of our favorite carols. Will you stand? Join our hearts together in prayer. In these moments of worship, O Lord, may we pause and reflect upon the gift you have given us in the Holy Child Jesus. As we wait for him to be born in our lives once again, remind us that Christmas is not just a day in our busy, hectic lives, but a season to last us all year long. Gracious God, Help us to be such disciples of Christ that the world may not only see Christ in us, but also come to believe in him. Amen.
ways. He comes among us as Emmanuel and assures us that God is with us. He calls himself the Son of Man. He identifies with our humanity and our destiny. He sets an example for how we are to live. He challenges us to live lives marked not by perfection, but by compassion, service, and forgiveness. He invites us to share with joy our most precious gifts with God, our lives, our hearts, and our praise. As we light our second Advent candle, may we be reminded of all that God has given us in this holy child whom we await. And may we respond to others in this holy season as Christ has responded to us by example. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. We are welcomed into the global Christian community, and all of this is God's gift, offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, and we acknowledge what God is doing for us, and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. These persons before us now come to this faith community for membership in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. And so I present to you this morning, Brad and Cindy Harrington, Patricia Jensen, Julie Killebrew, Sally Kistner, Larry and Connie Lindquist, Glenda Moore, Ken and Kathy Peckham, Pam Rice, Sandy Shepard, and Tony Tucker. And behind them are their shepherds who have agreed to walk with them on this journey this next year to care and support them as they continue in their relationship with all of us. My brothers and sisters, on behalf of the whole faith, I ask you these questions as you renounce your sin and profess your faith. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, will you respond, I do. I do. And do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression 
in whatever forms they present themselves. If so, will you respond, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, will you respond, I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, the answer is, I will. I will. And will you who sponsor these new members support and encourage them in their Christian life? If so, will you respond, I will. Let us pray. Birth in God when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the waters and brought forth life. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the waters of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Holy Spirit. He called to his followers to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and he who receives it. May we all remember our baptisms and renew our commitment to love and serve you. May your name be praised now and forever. Amen. Amen. Chester Bradford, whom we know as Brad. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of God, our creator, who loves and creates us all. Christ, our redeemer, who loves and redeems us all. And the Holy Spirit, the sustainer, who loves and sustains us all. Chester Bradford, the Holy Spirit, work within you that having been born of water and the spirit, you may live your life as a faithful disciple of Christ Jesus. Amen. And we continue now by welcoming our new brother in the faith. And now, dear friends, we receive you into the United Methodist Church. As members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, will you respond, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service and your witness, the answer being, I will. My dear friends, I commend to your love and your care these persons whom we this day receive into membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. Will you join me with our welcoming statement? We, we welcome, welcome you to this congregation of the United, United Methodist Church. Church. With you, we renew our covenant faithfully to support the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. The staff and members welcome you to Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church as your new church home. We pray that you will find this a warm and inviting place where you may grow closer to God as you make new friends.
difficult. Their world was one of violence and religious oppression, political corruption, and social upheaval. Armed conflict was common, and dictators seemed to rule the day. After 2,000 years, it seems as if our world hasn't changed very much. 
Into a dark world, God chose to reveal himself in the most unlikely way, through a small, helpless baby. And he chose an even more unlikely messenger, a young teenage girl named Mary from the town of Nazareth. Even though Mary could have felt embarrassed or even ashamed when she became pregnant before being married, she chose to believe what the angel Gabriel had told her months before. Don't be frightened, Mary, for God has decided to bless you. He will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. What life-changing news for a teenage girl to receive. Surely she must have felt confused, anxious, excited. Yet Mary also found a place deep inside her heart where she made peace with what was to happen. And from that place of peace, her joy began to grow and grow until she could no longer contain it. Christmas is for children. We like seeing Christmas through a child's eyes because it helps us remember the wonder and excitement of the season. Can't you remember starting months in advance on your Christmas wish list when you were a kid? 
So what do you want for Christmas this year? We all probably have our lists of what we'd like Santa to bring us. But when all the presents have been unwrapped, did you get what you wanted? For some of us, what we want and need is simply a little peace in our lives, true peace. Not just an oasis of silence in a busy day, but peace so profound that it doesn't make sense to the world because it's not of this world. A peace that passes all understanding. As adults, we have our relaxation techniques our self-help books, and our 10 easy steps to less stress in 10 minutes. What we don't always have is peace in our lives. And sometimes it takes a little child to show us the way.
At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiancee, who was great with child by this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them and they were terribly frightened. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy to everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in the city of David. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to all whom God favors.
the Jews. We have seen his star as it arose, and we have come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where did the prophets say the Messiah would be born, he asked them. In Bethlehem, they said, for that this is what the prophet wrote. And then Herod sent a private message to the wise men, asking them to come and see him. At this meeting, he learned the exact time when they first saw the star. And then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went on their way. Once again, the star appeared to them, guiding them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped 
over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house where the child and his mother Mary were, and they fell down before him and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. One can only imagine how the lives of the wise men were changed that night. They came prepared to worship and to offer costly gifts. Yet surely they received far more than they gave. How like our loving God to give back to us when we come to God in heartfelt adoration. As we reflect on God's love, let us continue our adoration with the giving of our own tithes and offerings.
loving God, in the beauty of this moment, we pause to acknowledge that you are our peace. On that silent night so many years ago, you came into this world and into our lives to bridge the gap, to make right the relationship between you and humanity through your son, Jesus. And because of his sacrifice, we can know eternal peace with you. How we praise you and love you. We thank you for the gift of your spirit, the comforter, who lives in our hearts, who encourages us and guides us back to you when we lose our way. And we celebrate that we are unique expressions of your love to the world, demonstrating the way of peace to all. Amen. Just like clockwork, ready or not, Christmas arrives every year. We expect a lot from this time of year, and our expectations often go unfulfilled. Maybe next year things will be different, we tell ourselves. Maybe then we'll feel the spirit of Christmas in our hearts. Truth be told, some of us leave Christ in the manger all year long and miss out on the power and the presence of the risen Christ in our lives. A famous songwriter wrote an anthem for peace many years ago called Imagine. We don't have to simply imagine what a peaceful world is like. We have that available through the power of Christ's spirit at any time, at any place. Make this year the year you take the baby Jesus out of the manger and receive him into your heart and life. You can change your own little part of the world by simply abiding in Christ's joy and peace. Be the change you want to see. Receive his unconditional love and experience a peace the world cannot give. For once you know the child of peace, his kingdom of peace will appear, first in your heart and then in the hearts of everyone you touch.
blessing. Be the change you want to see. Receive his unconditional love and experience a peace the world cannot give. For once you know the child of peace, his kingdom of peace will appear, first in your heart and then in the hearts of everyone you touch. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.